Good day learners! Welcome to the world of media and information. My name is Sir Brex. Let's think wisely, create smartly, and share information responsibly. Senior High School's Media and Information Literacy. In our last episode, we talked about the essential competencies of media and information literacy. Do you still remember what those are? Join me as we do a quick review. For us to achieve media and information literacy, you have to be number one, media literate. It means being able to access, analyze, evaluate, and create media in a variety of forms. Number two, you also have to be information literate. It means having the competence to recognize when information is needed and to locate, evaluate, and effectively communicate information. And number three, technology literate. It means being knowledgeable on the proper use of technological tools to access, manage, evaluate, create, and communicate information. Thus, media and information literacy will enable individuals to become competent producers and responsible users of media and information. Today, we will magnify your understanding of this 21st century literacy as we focus on how to become a responsible user of media and information. This is going to be an exciting learning journey. So get ready to think, create, and share. Hello, senior high learners. We are here at the University of Southern Mindanao's DXVL Cool 94.9 FM, Radio Pilipinas Soxergen. Do you listen to the radio? Do you watch television shows? Do you read books and magazines? Or do you now rely on the internet for almost everything? If your answer is yes, do you know that as a user of media, you have to take on a big responsibility? That is going to be our lesson for today. To kickstart our lesson, let us have an activity. I will be flashing statements. Do a thumbs up. If you think the statement describes the responsible use of media and information, and a thumbs down if you think it describes the irresponsible use of media and information. Are you ready? Number one, Rio immediately shares information that passes through his social media account. Thumbs up or thumbs down? If your answer is thumbs down, you are correct. He should verify the information first before sharing it. Number two, Arby blocked the person who made a harsh comment on his social media post. Thumbs up or thumbs down? If your answer is a thumbs up, you are correct. It is better to stop and not see rude comments than to argue and fight with netizens. Number three, Zyra did not cite her source of information in her assignment. Thumbs up or thumbs down? If your answer is thumbs down, you are correct. You should always give credit to your source. Number four, Alan turns off his phone's notification every time he answers his module. If your answer is thumbs up, you are correct. Turning off your cell phone's notifications will help in avoiding the distraction of glancing and checking your social media notifications while you are doing an important task. How many correct answers did you get? You're now a step closer to becoming a responsible user of media and information. You deserve a thumbs up. Technology has changed communication and information platforms. Today, more than 2 billion people around the world use Facebook, the most popular social media platform to get news, communicate with family, and stay in touch with old friends. Social media has indeed changed our lives. In this time of pandemic, we are witnessing how it delivers easy access to communication and information. However, if we don't all learn how to use it responsibly, it could have devastating consequences for our lives, including society as a whole. Before we discuss proper online media behavior, and this is called netiquette, let's first take a look at some ways media can be unhealthy if used in an irresponsible way. Number one, distraction and loss of productivity. You turn to social media as a mental break from school, right? 
and while taking a breaking is dangerous, getting distracted can be a problem. The temptation to glance at social media can take people out of the meetings, social gatherings and other events that may require your attention. Here's an example. Hey Sissy, how are you? I have something to say. Reply as up because I know you'll be happy on this information. Yes, I'm good. What is it, Sissy? Di ba you like Ike, my cousin? He's here's the house now and he's like asking things about you. Oh my gosh, really? Two, addiction. In extreme cases, the constant urge to check social media and write posts or to play online games can lead to addiction. People afflicted with this aren't just frequently involved with the platform. They feel compelled to engage constantly to the detriment of their relationships, health, and happiness. Take a look at this news. A Filipino teenage gamer died May 31 after spending too much time on playing online mobile game and forgetting to eat. Carl, not his real name, 15 of General Santos City, kept failing to address his bodily needs, such as food and rest, as he was fixated with mobile game. According to the report, his excessive long gaming sessions ultimately led to complications in his lungs. Number 3. Stress and Mood Frequent engagement on social media can also affect your stress levels and mood. In the 2014 study of Christina Sagiglo and Tobias Great Mayer, they found out that the longer people are active on social media, the more negative their mood is afterwards. Negative online interactions such as flame wars are correlated to rates of anxiety. A flame war is a series of angry, critical, or disparaging comments by two or more people in an ongoing online argument. Mag-usap na kayo privately. Don't wash your dirty linens on public. Don't let Sao Suka to take over this issue. Napaka-shallow niyo naman. Madam, excuse me lang po. Parang ikaw lang naman kasi ang hindi kalmado. Watch your words. Just because you're a famous person, you're exempted from assassination. FOMO or fear of missing out. It is a form of anxiety that you get when you're scared of missing out on a positive experience that someone else is having. Ay! Buti pa si Jera nakapag South Korea. Bo! Kasama pa mga classmates namin. Number 4. Social Isolation in the 2017 study of Brian A. Primack and his colleagues at the Center for Research on Media, Technology and Health at the University of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, entitled Social Media Use in Perceived Social Isolation Among Young Adults in the U.S., they found that among people between the ages of 19 and 32, the people who spent the most time on social media were twice as likely to report feelings of social isolation. The irony is, of course, that social media was created to bring people closer together. The problem is that people often feel temporarily fulfilled with an online interaction, so they don't pursue a more fulfilling real-world one. Over time, these limited interactions form the majority of their social life, and they feel isolated as a result. This is true to a lot of homes today. Every family member gets so busy with their mobile phones that they forget to talk about their relationships, problems, and joy. Social media isn't bad. In fact, it is one of the important tools of communication during this time of pandemic, as we widely use it today for our business, for entertainment, for education, and for staying updated. But if its use is abused, it could turn into a bad media for people. So if you want it to hold a good, or at least a neutral place in your life, it's on you to take on the necessary measures to use social media responsibly. Here's how. Number one, turn off notifications while doing something important. Most of the time, we get the urge to check in on social media due to some external prompt 
like your phone buzzing when you get a notification. Turning those notifications off can reduce the number of prompts that encourage a reaction and hopefully break your habit of routinely checking in. Number 2. Limit your screen time. It may be hard to limit the time you spend on social media. So the first step is to start tracking how much time you're spending and how you're spending it, like what we did in the last episode. You can identify the root causes of your habit and work to improve it. Set a strict time limit for yourself, such as half an hour a day or three check-ins per day. Number three, note the quality of your online interaction. Not all social media use is bad. Pay attention to how you feel after each interaction, such as getting a message or reading a headline. Never start a flame war in the comments section. If you feel negative feelings, consider unfollowing, muting, or blocking the person who caused that feeling, or adjusting your habits to avoid it in the future. Number 4. Beware of what you post and share online. The internet is a public domain. Remember that. So even when you think you are posting something privately, once it is posted on the internet, it is out of your control and it can be potentially used against you in the future. Avoid posting profanity, abusive content, obscene content, offensive content, negative opinions about other people such as your classmates, relatives, or teachers, poor grammar and spelling, and threats. Moreover, in the past few years, we have seen the growing number of vloggers in our country, with their potential to influence the viewer that they have built as content creators. They have to observe moral standards that adhere to community guidelines and policies. Number 5. Go for more offline interaction. Finally, don't let social media make up the majority of your social interactions. No matter how convenient it is to keep in touch via a digital platform, your best, healthiest, and most fulfilling interactions are usually the ones you have in person. Those are the ways how to use media responsibly. This time, let's talk about how to use information responsibly. There are two major issues in our information use, the spread of fake information and plagiarism. First, let's talk about fake information. Fake information or fake news is categorized into two types, misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is false information that is intentionally or unintentionally disseminated on media. It is created by an individual or group for their own amusement, or it is the result of shared and verified information. Here's an example. Uy! Mm. Ang dami mo namang saging. Kapag kumain ka ng saging, hindi ka tatablan ng virus. Gusto mo? Mm. Hindi yan totoo. Oo, maraming makuwang vitamina sa saging, tulad na lamang ng manganis, ng folate, ano pa ba, vitamin B, C, at potasyo. Pero wala pang pag-aaral na nagsasabi na ang saging ay panlaban sa virus. Ganun ba? Eh, yun yung nabasa ko eh. Alam mo, kung gusto mo talagang kumain ng saging, kailangan dalawang beses lang sa isang araw. Kasi pag nasubrahan ka niyan, ay naku, makonstipate ka at kapag may problema ka sa bato, bawal yan. Saan mo naman nalaman niya na, Ber? Kay Dok Sarip. Galing ako kahapon, nagpa-check up. This information, on the other hand, is intended to convince online users to favor a group or individual's political perspective. Misinformation and disinformation can be addressed if we are responsible in our information use. We have to be critical thinkers in dealing with the information that we see or read online. Here's how. First, always check the source and author of the information. Ask yourself, is it from a credible news and information agency? Is the author reliable? Check it on the page where the information is published.
There are also sites that copy the logo or name of a credible news source to deceive the audience. That is why you have to really pay attention. Also, check the date when the information was published or posted. An example of this is the reposting of a non-working holiday or walang pasok announcement from previous years. Some of you have been victims of this. That is why you must always check the date. Tol, walang pasok bukas! Kala tayo! Tingin nga! Last year pa itong na-post eh. Ito yung petso kong kailan na-post to. Okay. Next! Always do fact check. If a provocative headline or photos drew your attention, read and research a little further before you decide to pass along the shocking information. For instance, a misleading social media post on August 14, 2020 is comparing the Philippine government response to the 2003 SARS outbreak and to the 2020 novel coronavirus pandemic. It was leaked and shared 21,000 times. The post claimed that a prompt travel ban in 2003 resulted in zero SARS cases in the country, whereas a delayed ban in 2020 led to the Philippines recording the highest COVID-19 cases in Asia. The claim is false. The Philippine government records show no travel ban was implemented in 2003. The World Health Organization data shows that the Philippines recorded 14 SARS cases that year. Another issue in the use of information is plagiarism. Plagiarism is the act of using another author's language, thoughts, ideas, or expressions as one's original work. According to plagiarism.org, plagiarism is an act of fraud. It involves both stealing someone else's work and lying about it afterwards. This means that turning in someone else's work as your own, copying words or ideas from someone else without giving credit, failing to put a quotation in quotation marks, giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation, changing words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving credit, and copying so many words or ideas from a source that it makes up the majority of your work, whether you give credit or not, are all considered plagiarism. Copying of words and ideas from other people on social media is also considered plagiarism. I know you have already come across posts with credits to the owner or CTTO as their disclaimer of copying information, but social media has a share button, which you can just click if another person's idea is a lot like yours. Whereas this, when someone praises your copied post and you claim the recognition. Oi, Ben! Ganda ng reaction at pagtatanggol mo tungkol sa Manila B, ah. Ikaw ba gumawa nun? Ah, oo! Ako! Wow, galing! As a responsible user of information, you should not claim information that is not originally yours. Do not just copy and paste. Rephrase the idea and come up with your own words. Most importantly, always give proper credit to the authors and your sources. Those are the ways to become a responsible user of media and information. Now, it's your time to share your thoughts and ideas about our lesson. I want you to make an acrostic on the responsible use of media and information using your name. For example, with my name Brex, I would write B. Budget your time in using social media. R. Remember to always acknowledge your source. E. Embody good conduct online. And X, X out fake information. I know you have great and better ideas. I hope to see your acrostics on our official Facebook page at Beped TV MIL and use the hashtag MIL Responsible. To wrap up our lesson for today, I want you to remember the following key points on how to become a responsible user of media and information. Number one. Don't get too attached to media. Number two, 
respect other people's opinions and ideas on social media. Number three, observe proper conduct online. Number four, do not share fake information. Number five, be a critical thinker. Number six, don't plagiarize. And number seven, think before you click. Also, remember the following words. Netiquette refers to proper behavior online. A flame war is a heated argument between two or more individuals online, which results in those involved posting personal attacks against each other. FOMO or fear of missing out is a form of anxiety that you get when you're scared of missing out on a positive experience that someone else is having. Misinformation is false information that is intentionally or unintentionally disseminated on online platforms. There are no political intentions in misinformation. Disinformation is false information that is spread deliberately to deceive. Disinformation is planned and organized. Plagiarism is the act of copying someone else's words or ideas without the permission of the owner or without acknowledging the source. The internet and social media have indeed become such powerful tools. They greatly affect communication and information. But don't forget that we are the ones who operate it. We might have the freedom to do whatever we want using it, but we must remind ourselves to be mindful and responsible enough with it. Cliché as it may be, but think before you click is the real solution. Before doing anything, reflect upon the decisions you will do, how it may affect others, and how it may affect you. One good thing about social media is that it helps promote free speech, but like all freedoms, this should be exercised responsibly, and this sense of responsibility should be borne by us, the users. Again, think before you click. Together, let us build a healthier, gentler, more loving, and constructive world through media and information literacy. Next week, we will discuss how the evolution of media from traditional to new media shapes the values and norms of people and society. My name is Sir Brex. Always remember, think wisely, create smartly, and share information responsibly. Until next time here on DepEd TV.